Oscar Wilde famously described fox hunting as the unspeakable in pursuit of the uneatable. I wonder what he would have made of the courtship between the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives. We can see on the benches opposite that while our Liberals and our Conservatives are not necessarily happy about the process, they're a bit like relatives at the wedding. They're not pr protesting too loudly so far about their party's new partners. Indeed, Mike Rumbles gave a, a good impression, I would have thought, of a, a best man speech at an uncomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable wedding. Um, and one wonders, I suppose, uh, whether we're simply waiting for the passage of time and the consumption of sufficient drink before the inevitable fight breaks out. But is this truly uh, a coming together of equals, or will the old lady of British politics, the Tory party, like a black widow spider, eat her partner shortly after consuming the deal, presumably with relish, although perhaps at the cost of a little bit of indigestion? Of course, we don't need Oscar Wilde to find a language to describe the preening and the posturing of the First Minister when David Cameron came, came to visit, or the empty mouthings of the respect agenda. On this side of the chamber, we're absolutely clear about what David Cameron and Nick Clegg's government means for Scottish jobs, Scottish public services, and our aspirations towards social justice. When David Cameron says fairness, people in Scotland look to who his cabinet of millionaires really represents. When he talks about our constitution, we focus on his efforts to impose a five-year fixed term for his government by perpetuating its life beyond a vote of no confidence. And when he talks about benefits and pensions, people look to the cuts the government intends to make to their incomes. Look to your back pockets whenever you think about the Conservatives. Now, OK. Uh, Does the member regret that the Labour Party at Westminster did not seek to go into a government with other parties? There's McNulty. Well, I think the biggest regret that we will see is the, is, is, is the SNP advocating that people in England should vote Liberal Democrat. Look, look how that turned out. For the Liberal Democrats, this is the price of power. The whiff of a red box was sufficient for the abandonment of all principle of credibility. A harsh reminder that the Liberal Democrats of all parties are the least principled and most delusional. The claims that they have won the Conservatives' support for a predominantly Liberal Democrat agenda show that the Liberal Democrats have no understanding whatever of the embrace they are now caught up in. Uh, Annabelle Goldie talked about Al Alex Salmon's words, highly positive, substantive, productive discussions. I'm more interested in his actions and, of course, those of Mr Swinney. We know now that the government has brought in the first tranche of cuts, £6 billion across the UK, that translated into £330 million, I'm sorry, I haven't really got time, funding reduction this year in Scotland. We also know that more severe cuts are in the pipeline, a spending review that will slice back public services throughout the UK and will inevitably cause very serious difficulties in the next financial year and subsequent years here in Scotland. Next year, these cuts will directly affect frontline services. The costs, the scale of the savings will not only damage key services in health, in education, local government, it will have a very serious impact on infrastructure plans, our priests and criminal justice system and everything else. Now, given the likely impact of these decisions, and Mr Osborne has made his intentions perfectly clear, why is the SNP government saying it will defer the 300 million reduction this year to next year, leaving Scotland to face not just Tory cuts, but an SNP top-up? Surely the objectives of the Scottish Government should be to look to protect public services. If it's the intention of the SNP to dodge the implications of what Westminster is doing now and to carry on talking about, about, about warm words, then what we will face next year is 
double cuts, double cuts, and a, an approach which is completely at variance with the approach adopted in Wales and, and Northern Ireland. Now, we know wrong choices are the hallmark of this government. Their flawed concordat has already delivered year-on-year -year cuts in education at a time when the block grant has been increasing, and the amount of money this government has at its disposal is, is the highest ever level. But what we've experienced thus far in education, and I suspect in other areas of public service, will be as nothing compared with what we face next year with the Tory Lib Dem cuts and the SNP top, top up. Looking to the sustainability of public services and minimising the shock and the impact of, of the cuts to come, dealing properly with the public finances is the right thing to do. But regrettably, the SNP, as always, will put party before country. That is their hallmark as, as a political party. Three weeks ago, the people of Scotland delivered their verdict on the Conservatives. They voted overwhelmingly against the Tories, mainly for the Labour Party, but also for the Lib Dems and the SNP. These parties are now in different forms of partnership with the Conservatives. They're sending each other billet doux, exchanges, bon mots. These parties, all of them, are letting the country down.